So for our live example, please go to your course content folder and open our dash manual callbacks notebook. All right, so in this notebook, the important things that we're going to discuss are going to be those updates in that manual callback. So in here, you know, we've added two new assignments from our previous notebook where we're actually pulling in different dash dependencies and uh, one exception. So how do we utilize inputs and outputs and states for callbacks and then prevent update when we do not want anything to happen based upon you know something not being clicked or things running the first time where we don't want an, uh, an update necessarily actually working without it being told or prompted to update. So with that, let's go ahead and first reference um, how we're adding these and what we're adding actually to the graphic itself. So let's go ahead and run this application. And very similarly, when you run it, um, you're going to have this uh, dash running on IP scheme here. We're going to go click this and pull up our graphic that we're going to be referencing. So inside of this you can see it looks very similar to what we covered with our last section except we've added a button and an input field here. And this is a, a uh, input field that has a uh, that has a uh, assigned variable to what we we use as our basic assignment here of Apple. Um, and then a button that we're going to use to call back. So where did we get these and how did we add them? So coming down here to our assignment of our layout, we've now added this DBC component field here. Everything else should look very familiar except for this toast and I'll talk very briefly about that. Um, but here we've added an input group and an add-on for a button and an input. So this input group actually allows us to define a set of components that we want to link together and generally this comes in the form of the button and the input and these all this information of how you do this, how you call it, can be found again in our bootstrap components drop-downs with code examples. So our input group, if you go to dash bootstrap, you look at the individual components, come to input group, same with buttons, and then same with inputs. If you go to these, it will actually give you uh, the ways you can define those, how you can define the input types, how you can define button types, primary, secondary, um, which will link you to the theme of whatever is assigned to these is based upon the theme you chose. Again, for ours, we chose Space Lab. Um, button sizes, you know, all, all of these items. So it tells you what keywords you have in here, of things you can assign um, as inputs for each of these items, and then how you assign things inside of them, for example, like in an input group. Um, so here in our code, we added this utilizing this very simplistic line of code. And again, this is one of the reasons I like some of the DBC components. So I can easily tell it I have an input group, and as part of that input group, I want to add to it a button and an input. So the button I define as uh, the text to be update dashboard, the ID to be update, and I just want it to be the color, the primary color, um, which you can see on these buttons. You've got you know, primary, secondary, success, warning, but my primary color is again set by Space Lab. So Space Lab, this is their primary color. Add-on type. Um, so with this input group add-on, we can give it an add-on type. And for this, I'm going to make it a, a prepend, so meaning I'm going to put the button. So these, this input field and this button are going to be linked, and it's going to prepend the input itself, the DBC, the dash bootstrap component input that I define as symbol. The value that I'm going to put into there is going to be assigned to this, our symbol symbol variable that we created and assigned to AAPL. And down uh, next, we're going to define the type. So the type of this is, of course, text. It's not a number. It's not a percent. It's not a time. Um, this will be a text input. And then lastly, the size of my button or my objects are both small. So, so again, very simplistic way to use dash bootstrap components to add a button and add a field, an input field here for our our um, objects that we're looking at. Um, so with that, let's talk about a couple additional items. So this port, this 
portion here, the dbc.toast, is something I'm not going to cover very heavily. This is something you can come into the bootstrap components, look up toast, and get all of the configurations and what it does. But very simply, we're going to use this toast so that we know that when we push the button, something happened. I like the toast because it doesn't display on there all the time. It's a simple pop-up that you can define. Um, so here I'm just defining text, giving it an ID, and then telling it that it's closed. It's not something I want to be by open by default. I want to be able to dismiss it if it pops up and it's, it's holding, and I want it to disappear on its own after four seconds. So this is defined in milliseconds, so 4,000 milliseconds, so four seconds. Um, the icon, I want it to be success. Um, so success, primary, or su success, danger, you can define these these outputs as well. Um, they're, they go through those in danger, here, or danger, sorry. They go through those in detail here uh, when they, they tell you um, how you can define these and you can find that information in the, the bootstrap section for the themes. You can find it here. Um, as you look through some of this information as well, but we'll call it success, and then we just give it a little bit of style to tell it where to um, stick itself on the screen when it runs. All right, so with that, let's get into the meat of what we want to discuss, which is the manual callback itself. And these can actually get pretty complex, even though the code is very simplistic. So when you define a callback, you have to start by telling your app uh, to call it and say, I have a dot callback, and then define the outputs, inputs, and states that are going to, uh, that are going to be updated, be the input, and then give us values that we can utilize within the code. So pay very close attention to several things in this. We're not going to talk about this yet. We're going to focus on this first section how we define the function that will run, and then how we define the output itself. So in here, when this update happens, we want to start by defining what we will update on the output. So what is the output going to be? So we have to go in order of outputs, inputs, and states. So our outputs that we want to define as being updated when we push the button is first our table. So anytime we push this button, we want to refresh our application utilizing whatever symbol we choose, and we want to we want to first update our data table. So this data table, we want it to refresh when we rerun our our application. So our first output is going to be the analysis table, and the portion of the table that we want to update is going to be the data. We want to update our analysis table, and we want to update the data. We don't want to update its rows. We don't want to update its style cell. We want to update its actual information. We don't want to update its columns either because those are all going to come back the same. We want to update the analysis table's data first. So just keep in mind, when you define the outputs, you have to first define the ID, and then you have to be very specific about the information or the, um, the property of that that you're updating. Next, we're going to update our figures. We're going to go to our close and our metric. So close and metrics, and we want to update the figure. We want to update the figure of each of these. And then lastly, we're going to update two of our items from our toast so that we can see that our input was actually taken. So our toast, which is defined here, our ID of toast, we want to update the children, the children being the text that is actually in the toast, and we want to update the is open field. So currently is open is set to false, but if something happens and we are updating that graphic, I want it to pop open and tell me that something has occurred. So we're going to update the children and we're going to update the is open property. So these are our five outputs that we are selecting to update any time that we manually update our graphic. From there, we're going to next define what we want to activate this callback. So the inputs are the items that will actually make the callback live. So the input itself, we want to be our button. So in this scenario, 
our input is the button. So input is our update button. Uh, sorry, here we go. Our update button. So our ID for our button is update. So we called it update. This could have been anything. You could call it button, button one, two, three, button update, whatever you want to call it. But in this example, anytime update is pushed, we want this to fire. So what property of update when that button is clicked is going to actually fire this and it is our in underscore clicks property. So the button itself gets automatically defined um, it defaults to that in clicks property being zero. So if that in clicks property um, is as soon as that button is clicked, that in clicks property is actually in the background and will update. So if you look under buttons, one of the properties of the button itself is in clicks. Again, number and its default is zero. So this button has not been clicked from the, the time you launch the Dash application. So any time this interval changes it will change based upon the button being clicked so the button gets clicked and we know that in clicks is going to change so this will anytime that button is clicked fire this callback option and tell us that the button was what or, or it will in fact call it and then tell us you know this is going to execute because that input was fired Lastly, we want to define our states. So our state is any value that we want to use as an input in here, but we don't want to actually activate the callback. So in here, I want to know the state of our symbol ID, and I want to get the value of the symbol. So symbol is what we define as our input. So our, our ID of our input is symbol and the value is assigned currently to symbol. So if we pushed it, it's of course going to be AAPL. But if we come in here and live change this to example for DK and G for DraftKings, this will now give me a value. It will, it will grab the value of symbol and will pass that information as a state. So just because I changed this, this isn't going to execute. I didn't. I didn't push this button, so there is a state change, um, no input change, and nothing will happen. The only time that it will get the value of this input is if I were to fire the button or use the button to fire this callback. All right. So the next most important thing to note is in the definition of your callback here with the the defining of what is going to be inputs into your def and those are actually in order and already defined above so in your in your um, function call you will need to define in order a variable name for your inputs and your states so in this one we only have two so we'll find we'll define this this first input as you click so I'm defining uh, my update click as the first input and then we're going to define our symbols after. So my symbol here I'm going to define as this input. So these can be whatever you want. The importance is the order. It doesn't matter what you call these variables. The importance is the order and then knowing again what your format's going to be. If it's a text, if it's a number, if it's percent, whatever that value is, um, you need to know that but just know that the order is important. So you click, it's my first one, it's going to be my input. Symbol is my second one, it's going to be my state value because I only have the two. And again, we define these in order of output, input state, and then we put our def, we create it, and our inputs are going to be in order, all of our values from our inputs down through our states. From there, Let's go ahead and look through what we're actually doing inside of this so that we can look at what we're outputting. So when you run your when you run this the first time, it will attempt to execute these callbacks because this is something that um, is a live line of, of code and you could potentially put things in here to update your graphic the first time, but we typically, um, you know, when I'm using these, I only use these callbacks to, you know, update based upon a button or some kind of other um, live action once the dashboard is already launched. So this is why we've got this, this else with the prevent update down here. Um, so the first time it runs, it'll go through this and if 
here we're looking for what activated this callback and the, we know the only thing that can activate this callback is in fact our input but it's still handy for me to do this and I'll show you why later when we have multiple inputs coming into these callbacks um, but for this we want to look for the changed ID and the first time we launch it obviously this is not going to launch it it's going to be something else so the change ID is not going to match update and it's going to go into this else where we will actually raise a prevent update which means that this callback does nothing so basically the first time we run it this is saving us from this function being able to run in any kind of output occurring so prevent update was defined here we imported it from our dash dot exceptions and this will actually cause this uh, this callback not to run all right so the meat of this however though is again we're going to look for what context what item what's the name of the item that called uh, there that um, called this callback or what activated this callback and assign that to changed ID so this line of code here simply looks for the name of the item that activated the callback here we're going to say if update is in changed ID so if our input update is in changed ID then we want to execute this code so executing this we're going to rerun each of the items that we assigned above so we assigned our buy analysis very similarly when we first execute the code as looking at our momentum strategy and passing it a symbol so we are going to do the same thing we're going to take our we're going to assign reassign buy analysis we're going to assign that to uh, the output of running our momentum strategy which is again called from our momentum strategy notebook and we're going to assign the output of that data frame to our buy analysis so this is done again by grabbing the new symbol so if I made this DKNG if I made it AAPL if I made it BABA it's going to pass that value because we're calling it as an input here or a state I'm sorry and passing it through our momentum strategy so if again if I pass this if I go ahead and click this it's going to run for DKNG give it a second here to update and it will pull back this new information well you know what I will have to uh, rerun that here on the start of our next video so apparently I uh, I did not update myself on one of these callbacks and I need to do that real quick and I will um, I will actually show this callback manually updating here with a, a sub video but um, we're gonna go ahead and go through and finish this and then we'll, we'll create another small video to show that update once I fix that uh, but basically again what I want you to see here is that we're going to refresh that information we're going to update the update it using the new value input and then we want to as we've stated before I told you it was important to understand on the date the data table that input so we're going to come back up here and we're going to redefine the data as the new output to uh, to or from our buy analysis so we're going to go ahead whereas we did this before in the original assignment we're going to go ahead and make sure that our buy analysis is in the right format to be able to get it to write to our data table so we're going to go ahead and convert this to a dictionary and a records type so that we can assign that data or that to our data of our table we're going to go ahead and rerun for our close figure and our metrics figure so we're going to rerun our analysis plots function passing it the information that we that we define as the inputs and then we're going to assign our toast text and toast open values to dash update completed and true so that our toast will pop up from here this is the next most important piece that I want to draw your attention to so in this section the return is very critical on order so the and order and not just order also on the the data the the right format that you're passing back so we already defined our order here when we called all of the values that we want to update so in order I need to tell it I need to tell the table that I want to update your data I need to pass the, the figure for the close metrics the figure for 
uh, figure for our metrics themselves, so our RSI stoc uh, stochastics and MACD, the text for the toast, and the is open property for the toast. So you can see in order from our return, now that we've chosen to update this, we want to pass it our buy analysis first. Our buy analysis has already been converted to a, dict, uh, to a dictionary um, so that we can pass it and update the data. So we're updating data with the correct value. We're updating our close figure. We're updating our metrics figure. We're updating our toast text and we're updating our toast open in order as defined here when we reassign these variables. So again, it's very important to note the order of the outputs and making sure that you're, you've got it in the same order and the right format. All right, so, so again, just pay very close attention, uh, just a quick rehash, pay very close attention to the order, the ID, the object in, of the ID that you want to update, passing into your, your uh, passing into your function the inputs and the states in order of how you define them, updating your information, passing it back in the right order and the right format so that your graphic will update. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up this section, and I will add just a quick video after this where I've corrected the issue, and I'll show you this actually updating. And don't worry, I'll update your notebook as well. So any notebook you're running, you'll actually be able to click this live with both videos. But um, just we'll go ahead and uh, jump over to that and then wrap up this last section here before we jump into automatic callbacks.